Hello everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to share a big book haul with you. I've got lots of lovely books that have been sent to me or that I've bought over the past couple of months and I have chosen some real highlights to share with you. But there are definitely quite a few titles here, so let's get going. As always, I've linked the books in the description box down below so you can check out any individual titles that take your fancy. But let's see what I've been buying this spring. Well, first of all, I'm going to show you some of the books my mum got me as an Easter gift back in April, which was so lovely of her. She got me this book, Seed to Dust, A Gardener's Story by Mark Hamer, and I'm absolutely loving it. I've been picking it up and reading bits of it and so enjoying it. His writing is just exquisite, and you know I love seasonal books that go month by month through the year, and this is a book like that, so it's perfect to sort of dip in and out of month by month when you want a dose of nature writing. His prose is just beautiful, I love it. And it's about his story as a gardener on a private garden, his relationship with that garden and with the gardener's owner. But it really is just so well written, I'm absolutely loving it. And then I was so excited because my mum managed to find an old vintage copy of one of my favourite books, which is Henrietta's House by Elizabeth Googe. If you have been following my channel a while, you'll know that I'm a big Elizabeth Googe fan. I love her children's books, and this is one of her children's books. The Little White Horse is such a favourite, but I also love this book, Henrietta's House, which is a follow-up from her adult novel, A City of Bells but you can read this separately too, especially as it really is a book that's aimed at children. But if you love A City of Bells, then you'll recognise all of the characters that crop up in this lovely story. Henrietta's House is a brilliant summertime read. It's all about a special birthday picnic that's taken in the hills in Somerset. And it's just a really charming story. At the end of the book, Henrietta has a marvellous surprise that we can all really delight in. And yes, it's just a very simple, but very sweet and charming story. And I was so thrilled to get the original copy. I do have the Girls Gone By edition too, which is wonderful because it means this book is in print and you can get it. But because the cover is such a favorite of mine and I love the illustrations inside, it was just so nice to get an early reprint of it as well. So that was a very special present. And then finally, my mum got me another vintage book for Easter, which is The Bedside Barsetshire. And it's got the most exquisite drawings by Gwen Raverett, who is one of my favourite artists. And she wrote a wonderful memoir called Period Peace, all about her childhood growing up in Cambridge. And I was so thrilled to get this because I'm a huge fan of Anthony Trollope and his Barchester Chronicles and I was so delighted to get this. You can see I think the cover is just stunning and it includes lots of snippets from Trollope's novels and the idea is you can sort of dip in and out and read them at bedtime which I think is lovely and there are illustrations throughout by Gwen Ravrat, which is really lovely. So this is definitely going to be a book that I will have on my bedside table. You can see another illustration there. And I think it's just really charming. So that was a very clever gift from my mum. As she knows I'm such a Trollope fan, so is she. So I'm sure she'll be borrowing this as well. And then I got this fabulous book from um, Daunt Books, it was recently republished, well published by Daunt Books, it's In the Garden, Essays on Nature and Growing. This is a companion volume to their collection of essays called In the Kitchen, all about food and cooking. So I was really thrilled to get their garden one, and they've got some really great writers contributing to this. You can sort of see a list of them on the back of the book 
but people like um, Nigel Slater has written an essay, Francesca Wade, Daisy Lafarge, John, John Day, Caroline Craig, Elizabeth Jane Burnett, um, Jamaica Kincaid, Claire Lowden, uh, lots of different contributors, some new writers, some not so new, but I'm really looking forward to reading this. I love essays about gardening. And then I also treated myself to this book, which is The Ballad of Dorothy Wordsworth by Frances Wilson. I've been wanting to get this for ages and the paperback came out quite recently, so I thought I would get it. It's got such a lovely cover and as we're fairly near the Lake District, now we're living in Yorkshire, I'm definitely planning on going and seeing the landscape of Wordsworth. And I love reading the diaries of Dorothy Wordsworth and all about her companionship with her brother and her own writings on the countryside and her sort of daily domestic life. So for a long time I've been wanting to read a bit more about her life as well. So I'm really looking forward to this biography. I think it will be really fascinating and I'm really, really looking forward to it. So I was really pleased to get this. And then another book that I've been very excited to get that was released this spring is Your Inner Hedgehog by Alexander McCall Smith. I'm a big Alexander McCall Smith fan and I absolutely love his Professor Von Eagelfeld series and this is the latest title in that series. I didn't know he was actually still continuing the series so I was really excited when I read that this was about to be published. I find them absolutely hilarious books. Dr. Von Eagelfeld is a German linguistics professor. I studied linguistics as an undergraduate myself, so I kind of appreciate some of the little linguistic jokes <laughs> which come up, which sounds very geeky, I know, but it's just there's so much that's so entertaining about these books, all of the sort of politics within the university in Germany and Professor von Eagelfeld is a rather arrogant man who does have moments of kindness but he's also really quite oblivious as to the feelings and motivations of people around him and that can lead him into very funny situations but they're, they're just such light-hearted books I absolutely love them and I know that this will make me laugh so I'm really looking forward to this one. And there's a new character, I think, that's been being introduced in this book, a new female librarian who shakes things up a bit. <laughs> so I can't wait to read this one. It looks really good. And then I was sent this book by the publisher. It is Real Estate by Deborah Levi. And I can't wait to read this one. I haven't read her autobiographical books before. And this is the sort of latest volume in that series. And I started flicking through it and I was really impressed by it. She writes about for some reason suddenly getting this urge to buy all sort of silk bed sheets and like a silk dressing gown I don't know but somehow sort of enveloping herself in silk and she said it was from getting a royalties check come in the post and she decided to sleep like a royal <laughs> after that and at first she was rather worried about this uh, desire to sort of sleep in silk and she thought am I dying do I subconsciously know this and I'm sort of mummifying myself um, so it's full of her sort of wit and she just writes so well about domestic things about what home really means I mean she's someone who actually wants you to you know go out and buy a silk pillowcase for instance not that I've done that yet but she's just such a powerful writer and I'm really uh, looking forward to sort of reading more of this so I was really pleased to get that and then I ordered this very slim volume for myself but it's the poem The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman and this was just such a 
incredibly memorable moment for so many people at the inauguration last year and when I first heard Amanda Gorman read this poem I really wanted to buy it but it wasn't available in the UK but it just came out this year so I was able to purchase it and I was really pleased. I think they've done a lovely job on the cover as well with that incredible yellow suit that she wore too that was oh so so striking so I was really pleased to get this lovely audition of a lovely edition of a very special poem so I was thrilled to get that and then keeping in the poetry theme I also bought this new poetry collection as well a poem for every summer day edited by Ali a series and I think this is the the final one in the seasonal poetry collection so I have all of them now this one starts in June so I've got it just in time to go on my bedside table again and I'm so pleased to have this one again the cover is really beautifully done so I'm so pleased I've got autumn winter spring and summer now so really happy this one it says by the way a poem for every summer day they actually give you two poems a day which i think is really nice you can read one in the morning and one in the evening if that sort of strikes your fancy so i think they're really lovely collections and then i got this book which i thought sounded absolutely fascinating it's john keats poetry life and landscapes by susie grogan and i was really taken by the cover show it to you you can you can see that and i forget the name of the illustrator oh yes amanda white has done the cover and i love her prints of writers houses she's done some beautiful ones of monk's house virginia wolf's house of the bronte parsonage of jane austen's house and i love that they've chosen her artwork of keats house to illustrate the cover design and I used to live in Hampstead not far from Keats's house and I remember going there quite a few times so I'm really looking forward to reading this biography of John Keats and the sort of slant on this particular biography is that it looks at the places that he lived and how those landscapes and houses affected not only his life but also his work his poetry and so on so i think that sounds like a really interesting take um an interesting lens to, uh, looking at his life so i'm really looking forward to reading this and it's quite a manageable length as well which i admit is nice sometimes <laughs> with a biography to have a fairly manageable one he did die very young of course <laughs> which was sad but i am looking forward to reading that and then this is a book that was sent to me by the publisher still in keeping with the poetry theme going on here and that's the heeding by rob cohen and illustrated by nick hayes this looks really fascinating and i'm really impressed by the poetry i hadn't really heard of rob cohen before but i've started reading the poems in this book and i've been really impressed they look at last year and you can see the really striking illustrations that go on all through the book i'll show you another one and it's a book about lockdown about the different seasons about noticing taking heed of your surroundings and also of what is happening um, in the world generally and it's just a really thought-provoking and beautiful collection of poetry also about a very unique year so i was really pleased to get this one and then this is another book that was sent to me by the publisher dialogue books i'm always so impressed by the books that dialogue books publish they're an imprint that always interests me so i was really thrilled to get a new one um, published by them sent to me and it's called an ordinary wonder by buki papillon i hope that's how you say her name 
And I think this is a debut book and it sounded really interesting. It's set in modern Nigeria and it's about a young boy who has a twin sister and he goes to a boarding school in Nigeria. And there he sort of falls in love with his roommate. And he also comes to the right realization that he feels very much um, female, even though he is biologically male. So it's a book that's about gender. Um, it's a coming of age story, essentially, but a very different type of book and I'm really looking forward to reading it. It sounds like it'll be really thought provoking and a really strong debut novel apparently. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I was also sent this book, which is The Heartbeat of Trees, Embracing Our Ancient Bond with Forest and Nature by Peter Wallab Wallaben. I'm sure I've pronounced that wrong, so sorry about that. And he wrote the book The Hidden Life of Trees that was a huge hit, and this is the latest by him. This is all about um, humans' connection to nature and about trees, of course, too. And I think it's a book that will certainly make me want to go off and walk in the woods and see trees and my natural surroundings generally with very new eyes. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. And then I was also sent this book by the author, out of the Shadows, Six Visionary Victorian Women in Search of a Public Voice. And it's by Emily Madorikawa. I um, got to know Emily a little bit a few years ago because I really liked the book she co-wrote. It was called A Secret Sisterhood and it was about female literary friendships. Now this is another group biography that Emily has just written herself and it looks absolutely fascinating. It's about Victorian women who really used um, the craze at that time for seances and mediums and this belief in uh, spiritualism that was really sort of taking hold of society at that time. And they used all of that to really as a way to gain a public platform and to gain a public voice and to speak up about um, archaic laws, for instance, and women's right, rights, and even try to sort of engineer careers in politics. So really, really fascinating. I can't wait to read this one. I do generally quite enjoy group biographies, actually. I always find it interesting when um, different people's lives are brought together under a common theme and examined in that way. So I'm looking forward to getting to this one. And I've got another little pile over here. <laughs> I'll just bring round. So I treated myself to this book, which is a lovely collection of Charlotte Perkins Gilman's writing. It's the yellow wallpaper and selected writings. So there are a few short stories and things in here. But I think in the year that we had last year and the start of this year, so many lockdowns, I was really starting to think about time spent indoors and the empowerment of having a room of your own, as Virginia Woolf very uh, famously wrote, but also that balance between what can help women and then when confinement becomes too much and can be a dangerous thing. And also how women have also been confined to rooms. So I reread Jane Eyre in the autumn and of course thought of the famous first Mrs. Rochester. And I wanted to read The Yellow Wallpaper, which is also, it's a short story, but it's also about a woman confined to a room and she goes mad. So I'm really looking forward to reading that. And then I was sent um, a couple other books and this one is the special edition 
of Bridget Jones's diary and other writing by Helen Fielding and I was really pleased to get this it's the 25th anniversary edition <laughs> quite a fun cover and I haven't read Bridget Jones's diary for years and it's one of those books that I thought I kept thinking I had it but in fact I must have lost it in a move or taken it to a charity shop or something years ago and it was always annoying me that I didn't have my own copy anymore so I was really pleased to get this special edition and it's got some extra writing and things like that um, in it too so I think this will be a good excuse to reread Bridget Jones sometime and watch the film again too <laughs> which will be fun and then I also was sent this book, Light Perpetual by Frances Spufford. I really enjoyed Golden Hill, so I was interested to read his new book. And this sounds really interesting. Um, I think it takes a group of people um, during World War II, yes, November 1944, a German rocket strikes London and five young lives are atomized in an instant. November 1944, that rocket never lands. A single second in time is altered and five young lives go on to experience all the unimaginable changes of the 20th century. Because maybe there are always other futures, other chances. So it sounds almost like this sort of sliding doors moment. And I think that's a really interesting premise for a novel. So I'm looking forward to reading this and I've read some good reviews of it as well. So that's on my list. And then I was also sent this book, Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil. I enjoyed reading The Doll Factory by her. So I was definitely intrigued to get her new novel. I think the cover is really gorgeous and this one sounds really interesting. It also starts in May, so I really should kind of get on with this soon. And it starts, yeah, May 1866. And it's about a young woman living in a small British coastal village. And she is essentially shunned by that village community because of the birthmarks that cover her skin. When a circus comes to town, her father betrays her and sells her to the circus. And there she, in fact, ends up becoming the star performer. But she has very little control over her own destiny. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. I think it sounds like a really interesting read. And Elizabeth McNeil is certainly a talented writer. So looking forward to that one. I was also sent this book, How Do You Live? by Kenzaburo Yoshino which sounds really interesting to me. Um, it says, the streets of Tokyo swarm below 15 year old copper as he gazes out into the city of his childhood, struck by the thought of the infinite people whose lives play out alongside his own. He begins to wonder, how do you live? Considering life's biggest questions for the first time, Copper turns to his dear uncle for heartwarming wisdom. As the old man guides the boy on a journey of philosophical discovery, a timeless tale unfolds, offering a poignant reflection on what it means to be human. So that sounds really fascinating, and apparently this is also um, being made into a big new film. So... I'm really interested to read the book and it's considered a real classic in Japan so it's just recently been translated into English and I'm excited to read it. And then I got this book for myself, All the Sonnets of Shakespeare, edited by Paul Edmondson and Stanley Wells. I think it's got a gorgeous cover. And I just wanted a collection, a complete connect, a, col no, a complete collection of Shakespeare's sonnets. So I was really happy to have this one, and I like it because not only does it have each sonnet, but the sonnets are annotated with some interesting notes, which is what really made me want this edition as well. So I was really pleased to have this, and then. 
a biography I have been so looking forward to for ages and it finally came out and that's The Adventures of Miss Barbara Pym by Paula Van. and I'm so so thrilled to get this and it, in, it has inspired me on a big reread of Barbara Pym's novels which is wonderful because I started reading it and then I thought actually I think I want to reread the books first and have them fresh in my mind for then reading her biography because she drew so much on her own experiences and life to a certain extent when writing her books that um, I wanted to have them fresh in my mind but this new biography pulls in so much more detail about Barbara Pym especially in her youth and I'm just really excited to read it so it is quite a whopper but I know I'm going to enjoy every page so I was really thrilled about that and then a few bigger books <laughs> but lovely ones I've kept till last um, I got a new cookbook quite recently this is Home Cookery Year by Claire Thompson four seasons over 200 recipes for all possible occasions well I really love Claire Thompson I have a few of her other cookbooks and I follow her on Instagram and she kept sharing recipes sort of from this cookbook and I kept thinking oh that looks really good I wish I could make that and then I decided to just buy the new cookbook already <laughs> so I'm so thrilled to have got this one it's stuffed full of really lovely looking recipes I love seasonal eating as well as seasonal reading so I love cookbooks that are arranged according to the seasons and that encourage you to cook with the seasons using produce that's in season and there's some really great looking recipes here and also there are a few sort of um, dinner party like menu suggestions and suggestions for what to cook on different occasions throughout the year which I really like too see I was really thrilled to get this one and there's a recipe in here for rhubarb and custard cake that I already can't wait to make <laughs> I think that's on the agenda for this weekend so I'm excited about that and then I was sent this beautiful book the illustrated letters of the Brontes the letters diaries and writings of Charlotte Emily and Anne Bronte by Juliet Gardner and I was so thrilled to get this I have a few other books in this series they're published by Batsford and they have a few in their series of illustrated letters so they have the illustrated letters and diaries of Jane Austen of Virginia Woolf um, they've got Van Gogh and Oscar Wilde and some of the sort of the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood so it's a really interesting series and I was so pleased that the Bronte edition has just come out and I've been enjoying going through this already and you can see that it's got lots of very interesting illustrations some of the sort of original writings and letters and also with artwork um, illustrating what's going on so I was really really thrilled to get this and I can't wait to read all of it properly but it's also just a nice one to dip in and out of and they're good books too because they give quite a good overview that's really quite an approachable read to an author or an artist's life so I do recommend this series a lot I think they're lovely and then when I wasn't feeling very well in April my mum treated me to some lovely new editions of classic books and these are so gorgeous I already showed you the Jane Eyre edition on my last tea reads video but I wanted to show you the others so this is a series um, with that's been illustrated by Marjolaine Bastin and she does the most gorgeous illustrations of flowers and birds and sort of nature generally and she's illustrated a few classic books already Emma, Pride and Prejudice and Jane Eyre and they're just so beautifully done see there 
almost every page seems to have an illustration and then scattered through are all sort of fun little extras that she includes in the pages. So in this one, there's an old recipe for apple pie. The art of cookery made plain and easy apple pie and a little description of how to make apple pie. The type of apple pie you might have eaten in Jane Austen's day um, is on the back and it's just full of little things like that scattered through all of the pages. I love every chapter, starts with a little illustration as well and it's just so charmingly done and you can see something else in here. Oh yes, Mr. Elson's little contribution to Emma's book, his, his riddle, <laughs> um, which has been written out and things like that. I think it's just really, really well done. And they're just lovely illustrations and everything all throughout. So, so thrilled to get Emma. Pride and Prejudice has been done in the same way. I love the hydrangeas that illustrate this. And yes, again, it's just really, really beautifully done. I'll show you. I love the poppy in that one. And again, all these little interesting extras scattered through, like this is a fashion plate that's been inserted probably around the Netherfield ball scene. And they're just absolutely stunning. So I was really overjoyed um, to get that as well. I'm such a Jane Austen fan, so I am a real sucker for sort of beautiful editions of her books. And of course, I adore Jane Eyre as well. I've shown you this one already, but I just wanted to show you the cover again because it's absolutely stunning. I love the poppies on this one. So anyway, you can see that I've had some lovely books this season. I feel so lucky to have some really wonderful new titles to read. Let me know which of these especially appealed to you. Have you bought any of these yourself or read any of them? What did you think or which ones would you want to buy? I can't wait to hear what books you've been buying and enjoying in spring as well. But thanks so much for watching. Do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll be back again very soon. Goodbye!